Hi, my name is Phil Haslam, I'm an interventional radiologist and what I'd like to show you is how to do an SFA stenting through a relatively tight distal SFA stenosis. So at the point we're starting here we've actually got an anti-grade puncture performed and we've got a five, uh, actually we've got a six French sheath into the SFA and we have got a catheter and guide wire down to just above the stenosis. Now we've got a standard catheter down there with a short angle on the end and now we're up against the stenosis, I'm going to be advancing a hydrophilic guide wire with a 30 degree angle down through the stenosis. So we're just going to activate the fluoro and we're just going to very gently advance the guide wire. And we've got it up close to the stenosis and you can see that the tip of the wire is starting to catch on some plaque. So at this point you need to turn the guide wire and the easiest way to do that is with a torque device. So we're just going to attach the torque device to our guide wire. And I'm going to keep the torque device relatively close to the working end of the, the, the proximal end of the catheter so that I can control both together. Okay, so we have our guide wire out of the end of the catheter and I'm going to use the torque device and just manipulate it down through the stenosis, through the middle of the lumen. Now if I was to catch on any plaque on the way down here, I could end up doing a subintimal angioplasty, but for the purposes of this procedure, we're going to try and stay intraluminal. Now I'm just following down with the catheter to give it some more support and advancing the guide wire further and it's going very easily at this point until there so I'm going to take the catheter down to there to give it some more support I'm just going to withdraw the wire back into the catheter to straighten it out and now advance it gently through the center of the stenosis we've got a little loop in the wire but it's a hydrophilic wire and it's going very easily I'm happy that that's still intraluminal I'm now going to take the catheter down through the end of the stenosis towards the end of the guide wire. Now, if we're going to stent this lesion, we need to know exactly how long the lesion is. And there's several ways you can measure this. You can measure it actually by uh, calibrating on your screen and measuring it that way, or you can do what's called a guide wire pullback technique, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to pull the guide wire inside the catheter back to the start, or actually the distal end of the stenosis, which is about there. I'm now going to fix my hands on the guide wire and I'm going to slowly pull the guide wire back whilst watching on the fluoroscopy when I've got back to the beginning of the lesion into normal vessel. And that's there. Now I now know that the distance and the length of the stent or balloon, if I'm just going to balloon this, is between there and there. And I could take a centimetre sterile ruler and measure that distance. Now because we're using a simulator here, that's not actually an accurate distance and the length of the stenosis here is probably nearer 10 to 15 centimetres. So I'm now going to exchange this hydrophilic guide wire for a floppy tip Benson guide wire which will be my working guide wire for the purposes of deploying a stent. So I'm just going to pull this guide wire out, leaving the catheter in place through the lesion and we're going to select a stronger working guide wire. Now going to reinsert this guide wire down through the catheter and we're going to leave it in normal popliteal artery below the stenosis. And now we're withdrawing the diagnostic catheter. And we're going to insert our stent. Now we could actually be using a drug eluting stent here or we could be using a drug eluting angioplasty balloon but for the purpose of this procedure I'm just going to show you deployment of a stent. Now I think our occlusion, well our stenosis I think is approximately 14 centimetres long. Now the longest stent we have here is 10 centimetres. So I'm going to use a 10 centimetre by 6 millimetre self-expanding stent and then we're going to put a further shorter stent inside it just overlapping. Now we've selected our stent and we're just going to insert the stent at this point. And as in performing an angioplasty, I'd also give intra-arterial heparin 3,000 units prior to doing, prior to actually deploying this stent or a balloon. 
And actually, I think this 10 centimetre stent is going to be long enough. So we're just going to leave it there. We've got normal vessel below and normal vessel above. We're just going to decrease our digital subtraction to show the deployment of the stent. And at this point, we can deploy the stent. Now, all these balloon expandable stents are deployed in a similar fashion by fixing the shaft that it's mounted on and then pulling back with your left hand, which uncovers the stent. Now, it's important to do this whilst you're screening to check that the stent isn't walking forwards or being withdrawn. And you can see already the distal end of the stent has opened up and I'm slowly withdrawing the sheath, which is uncovering it. And you saw a little movement at the top and that's the stent now fully deployed. Now, what we need to do now is withdraw the mounting system that the stent's mounted on. So I'm just going to slowly withdraw that whilst keeping my guide wire in position. It's important that the guide wire doesn't come out at this point because we might not be happy with the final result. And in fact, you can see that the stent actually needs further expansion. So what we're going to do is put in a six millimeter angioplasty balloon and give it a bit of a stretch. So I'm just going to select the angioplasty balloon And we're going to go for six millimeter by 10 centimeter, which means we can do this hopefully in one inflation. Now I'm just going to insert the balloon, holding the guide wire in place again. You can see the balloon coming down through the center of the stent. No. So we're now going to slowly expand this balloon. We're using an inflation device here, which means we can get good controlled pressure There, the balloon's starting to expand and we're keeping an eye on the pressure gauge. This balloon's got a burst pressure of probably about 14 millimetres of mercury. Up to 12. 12 millimetres looks to be sufficient to have expanded that stent. We're now going to release the mechanism, take the pressure off the balloon, which should deflate the balloon. And now we can slowly withdraw the balloon whilst fixing the guide wire in place once again. And because we've still got an arterial sheath in place, we can now do a diagnostic run and check to see what the result is like. And that's given us a good, good angiographic result.